Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Spirit of God in the exact moment come upon everyone who is interested, super interested in doing the will of God. And that's what makes the difference. That's what makes the chosen ones to have been chosen. And those who haven't been chosen are put aside. Those who do the will of God make themselves chosen by God. Those who don't do the will of God, obviously, are put aside. Well, that's what I'd like to speak about. Yesterday, we spoke about Job. So Job who was a man who was blameless, upright, God-fearing, and that shunned evil. Job didn't have the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Job hadn't heard the voice of God as Abraham did, Isaac, and Moses heard as David. No. Job had, he obtained information of God by the mouth, obviously, of his parents. And he grew up with a character that was fearing to God. A character that was fearing to God. What does it mean to be God-fearing? To fear God is to obey His voice. It's to stop doing what is wrong and do what is right. But how am I going to do what is, is right if, and what is wrong? What, what is right and what is wrong? Tell me, Bishop. Pay attention. You know. We all know. Our conscience, God gave us a conscience. You know, when you do something wrong, when we do something wrong, immediately our conscience accuses us. It gives signs, signs that we've done something wrong. And we know that. And when we when we are about to do something wrong, we didn't do it yet, but when we are about to do something wrong, our conscience alerts us and the yellow light turns on. Attention, attention. That's what it is. So, for example, speaking of yellow lights, you can see that when a person obeys the laws in, in traffic, you know, the traffic lights, that even though they were created not only to discipline people, for people to have respect towards other people and the right of coming and going, but they also use these laws to get money from people, which is speeding tickets, so, for example, if a place that you could drive, you know, 50 miles per hour, they put 20 and 30 exactly for the person to forget and go over the speed limits and get a ticket. Well, anyway, in the traffic laws, that's how it is. If you disobey, you pay a fine or you are going to crash with your car, you may end up in hospital or even in the cemetery. Isn't it how it works in the traffic laws? That's the, the law of men works. If you failed, you're going to go to jail or pay a fine or pay this. That's the reality. This is the law which man created. So if the law of men punishes those that are rebellious and disobedient, then imagine the word of God, the voice of God, which is the voice of the right direction, of what is righteous, of what is truthful, of what is fair. The voice of God, which leads us to the path of life. Job feared God, and that's why he obeyed the word of God, what he knew of God at least. So that's why he was a blessed man. He was blessed. God blessed him greatly 
because he was a man who obeyed the voice of God. Now, what has been happening, for example, you see a man performing many miracles, casting out demons, performing wonders, and you think like this, wow, that man there is indeed a man of God because he performs miracles. He does extraordinary things. But that's where you deceive yourself. Sometimes the person performs extraordinary miracles because of their faith, they manifest that faith in the name of the Lord Jesus, which means he uses the authority of the name of Jesus, the faith the Holy Spirit gives them, and then he performs great miracles. However, Jesus said, not everyone, this is very strong, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And what is the will of the Father who is in heaven? It's for you to, even though you may not have experience, experiences with the Holy Spirit, you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not baptized yet in the Holy Spirit, and still you are that person that has a conscience, the conscience of what is right and what is wrong. And you have that, don't you? Everyone has that. So, if you have the conscience of doing what is right and you do what is right, then you are, in a way, obeying the Word of God. You are doing the will of God. You don't do better than this because you still don't know what else God wants you to do beyond what you already do. But the little that you know of what is right and you obey, this, my friend, makes you righteous before God because you obey the law of your conscience. However, unfortunately, people don't pay attention to their conscience. There are people that couldn't care less about their own conscience. They want to live in the mess. They want to satisfy the desire of their heart, their will, their lust, and consequently, they reap the fruit of all that. Well, Jesus said, not everyone, not everyone, because amongst those that are religious, that call Jesus Lord, Lord, that pray, that preach healing, that minister deliverance and healing, and they do great works. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not because, it's not because we have the authority, the authority to preach the gospel in the name of the Lord Jesus that we have the right to walk in the wrong way and to do what is wrong. It's not because I do a good work on one side that I have the right to keep doing what is wrong in my personal life. No, I'm also inserted in this context here. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Imagine the, the weight the weight of the scale concerning myself, because I'm a preacher of the gospel. Every day I'm preaching the gospel, every day I'm teaching, helping, praying for people, speaking of the name of Jesus. But if I do not obey his word, no way. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Why? Because not everyone is doing my will. So, my friend, think about that. Think. Perhaps you are that type of person that is already preparing yourself to go to church. I don't even know where you live, but perhaps you are already preparing yourself to go to church today, early in the morning, in the first meeting of the day in church. Perhaps you've been a faithful person to your church, to your denomination, your religion. You are faithful to your religiousness. 
However, if you don't do the will of the Father, and the will of the Father, I already said, is for you to hear and obey His word. But even if you don't know His word, and you have your conscience, the conscience of knowing what is right and what is wrong. So do what is right. So He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone. Job, who didn't know God, but he was an upright man, blameless, God-fearing, and that shunned evil. And to shun evil is to run away from sin, is to avoid that filthy, dirty environment, to run away from what is not good, that contradicts the will of God. That's to run away from evil. So the person obeys the word of God, then they are blessed. They have, if they remain, if they keep their life this way, they will enter the kingdom of heaven. Because not only did they say, Lord, Lord, but they also do the will of their Lord. That's the reality. And... In reality, Jesus, Jesus is only Lord of those who serve Him. God is only Father to those whom He formed. The Lord God is only the Lord of those who serve Him. It doesn't mean that you have to be a pastor, a female pastor, a missionary, nothing like that. But with your behavior, your conduct, your ethics at home, in your house, in the first place, at workplace, on the streets, wherever you go, you are that person that is identified as a blameless, upright, God-fearing person, and that shuns evil. That is the character that pleases God. That is the character that makes us enter the kingdom of heaven. Is it hard, Bishop? Yes, very. It's difficult because the door that leads to the kingdom of heaven is very narrow. It's a narrow door. And Jesus said that few will pass through it. Why? Because nobody wants to pay the price. No one wants to sacrifice their will, sacrifice themselves, their lust. They don't want to sacrifice their desires, their lust. That's the problem. However, people have the right to choose between God and the devil. Between to obey the word of God or to obey their own intentions and their own hearts and their desires and so on. Each one has the right, the freedom, right? God is a democrat. He gives us. He's a king, but he's not an emperor. He doesn't impose. He's a king, but he allows his servants to make their own choices. Not even the angels are forced to do his will. Satan and the demons, they know that. So, my dear friend, he is God, he is Lord, he is King, but he does not impose his will on anybody. But those who submit to his will, these have the prize of being overcomers. And the prize of the overcomers is to enter the kingdom of heaven and to live eternity with the King, the Lord of righteousness. Thank God. That's what we wanted to tell you today. May God bless you all and I'll see you soon. And don't forget that today we started that campaign against curses. If you are someone who was cursed and you carry the shadow, the shadow of a curse, this, this shadow is upon your life, then come to eliminate this problem through faith in the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.